welcome to the video guys. Bit of an unusual one, rarely on YouTube, but I'm hoping to pull my finger out and actually get on with doing some content. Because I'm fine with Facebook, fine with Instagram, and I had a period of doing some good YouTube videos, and then I just got distracted. But hopefully this is the start, this is 2022, this is the start of getting some actual videos out there for you. And today's an odd one, because we're going to look at a new release from TM, the VSR1, which I've got next to me, which I picked up from Empire Airsoft in the UK. Already had a quick look at it because I'm patient and I like it. Like the feel of it's good, um, the folding stock's brilliant, it's absolutely solid. Uh, and looking at it, the way that they've done the stock, there's clearly some accessories they've got in mind that are going to be coming out. So we're going to go to the bench, get it unboxed, see what you get, have a look at the rifle, sort of initially externals, see how it competes with uh, a lot of the other new offerings we've had out there. Because TM haven't really done a huge amount with their bolt actions. Like, I think the last one, which I, funny enough, did do a YouTube video on, was the L96 platform, which mm, didn't really take off. So it will be interesting to see what they've done with this. And I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they've updated some stuff. Because 45 degree, degree, blah, 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 45 degree triggers are out. We need 90 degrees. One joule, that's fine. That's the market they're aiming at. Not a problem. But the pin cylinder, pain in the ass. 45 degree trigger, pain in the ass. So I'm hoping they've updated it. But we're going to hop over to the bench, unbox it, talk about it, disassemble it, and then hopefully see what fits inside it and if there's any potential. But let's go to the bench. So here we have it. The lovely looking Taikamaru VSR1. So unboxing this is going to be nice because TM are very very good at their packaging like always so here's the box a little bit of damage i dinked it on the way home don't no judge me so let's get this out of there see tm never disappoint we've got a nice cut out inlay nice fabric nice little box everything's lined up nicely the mag is the mag is in it so what do we got? Obviously the obvious, we'll do that last. Three round segments. Yep, so we've got three round segments there. Long, short, and a medium. And here we've got, I have no idea what this is. Literally no idea what that is. Some kind of round rubber piece. Maybe that's a cap for the thread. Who knows, put that to the side. In a barrel plug, pretty common. Little bag of BBs. Uh, and I had I took these out earlier when I had a quick look at it, but they give you a full set of Allen keys to uh, I assume undo everything. There you go. Always nice. And then we have this. So let's get this out, put that down, and here we have it. So we'll start at the back. So it's got Solid, and I mean solid, like genuinely surprised how solid this is. So we've got solid folding stock, which folds by pushing this button down. That flings across, and then it locks in. Where's the camera? Locks in there, and that is solid. Like, and when it's open, same thing. Like, that's. I'm genuinely impressed. The TM who are known to make polymer rifles, this is solid. We've got their new funky short bolt handle, which I quite like the look of. It is huge, but it does feel good. Obviously, you've got an extended top rail with a cutout. Obviously, you've got all the M lock on each side, underneath. External hop. I'm going to assume this is a standard TM hop, but obviously, we'll uh, we'll be able to look when we actually get into it. Nice little flash hider, polymer, 14 mil counterclockwise thread. So no issues putting anything else on, suppressors, other flash hiders, etc. So that's a nice touch. Magazine. So this is where they've done something nice. So the magazines, they've there's a little plastic leaf spring almost in here under the mag. So when you turn it over, the mag actually drops out. And it looks to be a standard TM VSR magazine. So in here, that little bit there is flexible plastic that's pushing outwards. So it's pushing against the top of the magazine, which helps to push it out. 
clicks in nice, no having to faff around, double click, it just goes in, pops out. Oh, cool. Obviously, this is just going to be one jewel, so it's very, very easy. And oddly smooth. Obviously, it's loud because there's nothing in it. Decent rail. The rail has got built-in iron sights on it, so you've got the open there, post there. Doubt I'll be able to get that on camera from this angle. Trigger feels nice, pretty standard. It's got a little bit of heft to it, but it feels... It's back heavy, but it feels good. Like, it genuinely feels nice. The grip... I thought there might be a chance it takes GBBR grips, but basically, in here, there's one screw holding this to the receiver, but it sits a bit far forward, so... If you use some kind of washers, you might be able to fit real steel grips to it, but for the moment, it doesn't look like it, which is obviously a little bit frustrating. Where's this camera doing that? Can I? Is that a proper top-down view? There we go. So yeah, out of the box, pretty standard offering from TM. Rifle, you do get some tools, which is nice. What I assume is a rubber thread protector. One magazine. Some BBs, which they might actually be heavier weights, and barrel plug, and obviously you get the little rail sections. So that's sort of the unboxing side of it done. It's unboxing, there's not a huge amount to talk about really. But first impressions is it, I like it. I know some people might not like the, the skeleton stock or like the really basic stock, but I like it. It is very, very comfortable. Before I get it apart, I've got an idea of what I think Lalax will probably be coming out for for this. I'm confident there's going to be an M4 buffer tube because of how this is designed. Confident there's going to be bolt handles and grips. And the way that they've got M-lock here, under where the, the magazine would go, makes me think that there's going to be a dummy mag. And the fact they've got these little protrusions here on the front also make me think that... Can I show you that? That a magazine, some kind of dummy mag or extra mag retainer system is going to be there. But quality wise, it looks good, it feels good, everything's solid, it's smooth, there's no creaks, there's no wobbles. Out of the box, I'm impressed with it, it looks good. The next stage is obviously going to be the gutless, and I'm pretty confident it's going to be just like a TM VSR. But I'm going to go grab some tools and a T, come back, and then we'll get this apart. So, here we've got the TM VSR 1, let's get it apart. So what you're going to need is three of these Allen keys, which you actually get with the TM, uh, and then a medium sized sort of Phillips and a large Phillips. And pretty much like every other VSR, first step is the receiver screws. So large Allen key is for the mid and the tang, and the small or medium Allen key is for the front. So we go ahead and get this off rear one and then this front one which goes through the hot block these two screws sit inside the receiver this one comes out so pop that to the side and the whole thing just pops out so that's how you break it in half so two screws sit inside here this is what I mentioned earlier in the video. This little piece here, this little plastic spring leaf, is what pushes on the magazine. So once the magazine is in, it clicks into place. This spring leaf pushes up. When you press the mag release, this pushes down. That's what pops the mag out. But it does present one small problem. On the outer barrel, there's a cutout here. And I believe that cutout is to allow that spring, that leaf spring, plastic platform, or whatever you want to call it, to sit up slightly. So you, I don't think you can put another outer barrel on without modification and maybe causing issues with the mags, but that's something I'll uh, have to have a proper look at. But for now, we'll put the stock to the side. On this end, you've got your flash hider, which is a 14 mil counterclockwise. And then one step that everyone misses, and it's a big, big problem because it will damage your outer, is there's usually the screw either hidden under this rail or this front rail screw is long enough to secure it, which is the case on this. So you take one of the other Allen keys, 
get that off. There you go. Pop that to the side, flip it over. You've got a Phillips here, which all of these screws there are Loctited, so you can heat them up, but it tends to just come off pretty easily. So get this first one done. So keep that to the side, and you'll note, I hope, if you can see it, in there, there's a little silver patch where basically that screw has contacted the outer barrel, so that you can sort of use that as your reference point when you're putting this back together. But with both of those off, you can unscrew the outer. It's worth noting the thread on this is very good, like very, very tight, very little wobble when it's assembled. So we'll look at this in a minute, so we'll put that to the side. Here is the Diddy teeny, teeny outer barrel. You'll notice the hop adjuster. So that's slightly changed. It's thicker, it's polymer, but it seems reinforced with the way they've done the angles on it. And the hop block is ever so slightly different. And that's because of the minimal space in the stock. To get this out, two screws at either end. Again, these are small Phillips. Hop block comes off. If you can, try and keep both the screws in there. It just makes it a little bit easier. Pop that to the side. Then you've got a little screw in here for the hop adjuster. Again, that's a Phillips, smaller, but the screwdriver I'm using fits absolutely fine. And I'll show you the, one of the little tweaks they've made to this, which I quite like. So that is a lot chunkier. They've added some additional angles on it, which helps strengthen it up. It's a lot thicker. Uh, and the way it attaches to the hop unit is just a lot better. You get a lot less wiggle and flex with it, which I quite like. And now you can just slide that down, pop that out. Standard TM brass at a barrel, which in fairness is actually very good quality, like surprisingly good quality. Really clean, polished quite well. The hop-up chamber looks pretty much like a standard pop-up chamber, except and I haven't had this apart yet, so I've just noticed it. On that front screw, I don't know if you can see that, there's glue. So that screw there, absolutely fine. That screw, it's got glue on it. It's kind of slippery or whatever it's solid. Oh, I'm talking crap. That's uh that's just some oddly placed grease. Well, don't I look silly? So, pretty much a standard TM hop unit, looking through with the nub, standard TM bucking. So the mound style, looking through, standard TM style nub, standard hop arm, the typical little bit of flex you get here, but this does seem to be tolerant better. There's very little movement of this hop arm left to right, which causes the hook. So you might get away with being able to use this if you're going to use standard buckings like the TM, the nine ball or the modified tan, which are all very good buckings, the modified tan is probably the best mound style bucking out there. So I don't think you're gonna have any problems hopping heavy ammo, obviously minus the, the power problem. But standard chamber, which to get apart if you need to, two main screws on the body, here, here, one screw here for the adjuster, and then two here for the adjuster. I'll get these apart, Just that one. One which is not covered in glue, just a little bit of slippery grease. And then do the three on the plastic hop adjuster. So hop unit wise, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna to have to do another video where I try and upgrade one of these with sort of the parts that I'd usually shove in a VSR, just to give you an idea of what potential there is. But looking at it, I think the chamber is just a standard spec TM chamber, so everything else should fit fine. When you take the chamber out, you're going to have your little follower. Don't lose that spring. Put that to the side. In a barrel, which I think, uh, I think it's about 180 mil. It's longer than a 150. And it is bridged. So 
Yep, it's a bridged barrel rather than an unbridged, which is a little bit annoying. It does limit your options with your standard TM bucking. And it's a VSR cut barrel. So if you're going to swap the barrel out for something unbridged, you can pretty much use any bucking. If you're going to stick with the stock barrel, you are limited to mound style buckings unless you are going to debridge it. Put that to the side. And then you've got standard TM hop arm. So a little fang design. There's a mod called the Bic mod that you can do if you're on a budget, but there are a lot of other companies that do make hop arms for this. And that's pretty much it for the chamber. There's not a huge amount to go into. So I'm just going to shove that to the side, keeping an eye on the screws. And then we have the receiver, which before even taking it apart, it's got 45 degree internals, 45 degree trigger. I'm a hoping, I'm a hoping that they've updated some stuff. And frustratingly, the cylinder is pinned. So they've given you a really nice cylinder and it's pinned and you've got to bore that out. It is a pain, absolute pain, and 90% of people will end up destroying it. So if you are gonna upgrade this, just swap the cylinder out for something else. Action Army's fine, Lalax, Maple Leaf. Although there is some other stuff I can already see that's a bit different. Trigger wise, looks to be a standard 45 degree trigger with one tweak. I'll move the bolt out of the way. See here at the rear, there's this little plastic piece which is almost a step. It brings the, the face of this rear trigger section up higher. And I think that might be to secure it or where it rests inside the receiver. If it's the same size as things like Spring and Custom Works, you might be able to use the same as Spring and Custom Works trigger just using this bit on top of it with a longer screw. But when I get it apart, you'll see what I mean. So small Phillips, and there's one screw here and one screw here. Oh larger Phillips for that, sorry, because they're quite deep. And again, they've got red thread lock on, only a little bit, but enough to be mindful of. So this is the bit I'm talking about. So this little section here sits on, I'll pop that off, this bit on the back of the trigger unit. So this trigger looks to be just a standard 45 degree trigger. Just no changes to it from what I can see. Everything about it looks the same. Placement of the screws looks the same. The only difference is this little section, this little step or bracket, which sits on the back of the trigger like that. And the screw is significantly longer than the front screw to accommodate the extra distance that this obviously brings. So you might be able to fit this over other triggers like uh, the maple leaf triggers maybe, um, Possibly the Spring Custom Works triggers, but I'll hopefully get a trigger soon and do another video and show what does or doesn't work. So in terms of fitment, it should be fine, but in lining it and getting it to sit in the receiver, this piece plays a part in that. So that's something to be mindful of. And with the trigger out, you can just slide it out. Obviously you've got your guide ring, so don't lose that. And yeah, as I said, this is a pinned cylinder. So 45 degree polymer piston, 45 degree, well, sorry, standard 7mm spring guide and 7mm spring. What is different though, is the length of this cutout. It is about, where are we? Yeah, about that much further forward. And the reason they've done that is to reduce the amount of volume. So the piston is going to be sealing up here rather than down here. So they've taken a chunk of air volume out to try and match the short barrel they're using. Which isn't bad, except this cylinder is almost entirely useless because of the way they've pinned it. Frustratingly, it looks like it could have been a good quality cylinder. VSR style bolt handle and end cap, so things like your Maple Leaf Action Army should fit no problem at all. And I actually think that this is a standard VSR bolt handle that just has a polymer cap screwed onto it. Which, do I want to check that? I'm, I'm going to check that. Oh, the piston, it has got a very long air brake on it, which is why they are surprisingly quiet. And yeah, as suspected, it is just a TM bolt handle. Standard TM bolt handle, not even a G-spec. With just a clever little moulded cap that just fits over it. So I'm pretty confident they're going to be providing alternative caps for people. 
I actually don't mind that. It's quite a uh, quite a clever idea, actually. Screws in that way, and that screws back in. So yeah, if you don't like the big chunky handle, you can just swap it out. Take this off. Use the standard one. I'll probably swap it out for like a maple leaf or an action army one. Snap that down. Be careful because it is just polymer. Uh, I'll show you the piston if I can. So that in there is an air brake piston. Hence why it's very quiet, but it's a very, very long air brake. And they've already reduced the cylinder volume quite a bit by extending this cut. But overall, quality wise, everything is quite good. The, the problems that I see is this little piece could be a problem, but realistically, you could probably just 3D print something. It is using 45 degree internals. So if you are going to upgrade this with any kind of degree of power and longevity, you are going to want to swap that for a 90 degree and you are going to want to swap this for a 90 degree. And I would go with 13 mil springs rather than the smaller seven mil or the nine mil springs, sorry. But that's it. I mean, if you want the end cap off, it's literally just one screw there, turn it, take it off. There's a spring and a plunger, exactly the same as every other TM based gun or VSR based gun, sorry. Receiver quality is good. The scope rail is very good. The scope rail, I don't know whether I'll be able to show you, uh, has got a little iron sight built into the rail. The guide rings are actually very decent quality in terms of how well they fit, which I should have shown before I took it apart. So I'll shut the trigger back in just to show you how well they fit. There's no slack in them really. Short screw, oh no, long screw. Back. So quickly whip this back on just to show you what I mean. So yeah, overall I like it. It's expensive. You're paying for the stock and the folding stock and everything rather than the internals. But if you're buying a TM, you're pretty much going to either leave it at one jewel and just use it until things break, or you are going to upgrade it. But guide ring fell out. Seals. It's very quiet, by the way. Very, very quiet. Guide ring goes back on. Hop unit gets assembled, and it's just the reverse. And that's pretty much the internals of it. Stock wise, it's not one piece. This is actually two halves bolted together with like an inner chassis. I think it's pretty strong, though. It feels very strong. The folding stock is. Very nice, very solid. This section backwards is entirely metal. Upgrade wise, if you're HPAing it, you might have some options. If you're running a uh, Wolverine bolt, for example, with a small four mil line, you've got the opportunity to potentially drill a hole here, print a dummy mag, have your little battery is, sat in there. The four mil line, it's an odd one because you're very limited with the space in here. And it isn't a solid one piece stock, it is obviously split down the middle. So you might be able to route it maybe straight down, maybe. Get this off, try and drill from this side up and in, and then route it. Benefit of the, the Wolverine is that they've got a four mil line rather than like Minecraft or other HP engines that have six mil. So you do have some options. It's mainly, is the trigger going to fit in here? Is another aftermarket trigger going to fit in there basically? And if it does fit in here, can you use the rear space off of the stock trigger unit on the back of it to get it to seat correctly? Out of barrels, I don't think you're going to be able to use anything without a mod. But VSR cut barrels, VSR buckings, VSR chamber, this Maple Leaf Action Army should all be fine. Cylinder, if you're using a normal VSR cylinder, you are going to be slightly over volumed. But externally, the bolt handle is going to fit, cylinder and cylinder head seems to be TM VSR spec. So again, Maple Leaf Lalax Action Army, all that sort of stuff should fit in there, no problem. Things like Spring Custom Works, Piston, Action Army, My Wasp, like, if things will fit in there, won't be an issue. It's just the trigger that's a little bit on there. Mm, not sure. But that's it guys, gonna hop back over to the table and uh, yeah, have a sort of final thoughts on it and uh, see what we think. So guys, we've taken a look at the rifle, we've done the unboxing, we've had it apart. So the last sort of part of the video is, what do I think of it? Looks wise, I like it. I like everything about it. It's short, it's light, 
I like the folding stock. I oddly like the chunky bolt handle. It's good, it is a very nice feeling gun. Replica riff. 40mm counterclockwise threads a nice touch. The fact that the mags actually do spring out. It's lovely. Bolt pull for again for a make it in properly. Bolt pull, obviously you're looking at one drill. It's good. But looking at the internals, the team have made some little refinements, like some of the quality on some of the bits, like the hop unit and the tolerances seem a bit better, same as the guide rings. The fact it's 45 degrees still, incredibly disappointing, but obviously this is for the Japan market, so 45, seas, 45 degrees seas is fine for them, as is the fact it's obviously lower joules. Pinning of the cylinder means that you're probably going to bin that all off, because most people will just destroy it trying to get that pin out, or you'll just end up with a permanent leak. So from that point of view, it's a little bit on the pricey side. The stock is good. It isn't one piece though, it is two pieces put together, as we discovered over on the bench. But it is solid. m -lock everywhere, couple of cutie sling points, it's nice. Potential for it? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd say so. I mean, there's potential for everything if you try hard enough, but the fact that you can use VSR buckings and barrels is good. The fact that you're pretty sure you can just put another hot chamber in there. Um, eyes peeled, I do have something fun coming for that. But things like AA Maple Leaf, etc., should fit without any issues. Outer barrels, subject to testing. I don't think you're going to be able to swap anything without making a mod to it. But you're buying this for a short rifle, right? So this isn't a problem. You can put a suppressor on there if you want to run a long inner, you can. But the 180 ish inner is going to be fine. Everything about it externally, I like. I really do like it. Um, upgrade wise, HPA, obviously it runs a VSR system inside, so VSR Mancraft kit as an example, a bolt will physically work in it. Routing of the line of the battery, it's going to take some creativity, but obviously it will be done. There will be some net suave, savvy, savvy people out there that will get it done. Obviously, external wise, you can change everything up how you want. Spring wise, obviously you can put other cylinders in, cylinder heads, Lalax, Action Army, Maple Leaf, etc. Piston wise, mine, maple leaf, action army, etc. Trigger wise, that's the only dubious bit. I think it should be okay if you can recycle that rear spacer or print one. Very easy to print and design. I mean, I might even try a Springer Works custom trigger and knock one up myself to see if it will physically fit in and line up. If it does, it's going to be a good platform. It is a dressed up VSR, but it's dressed up nicely. Like, it is comfortable everything about it is nice oh it's just a vsr we we know the vsr we love the vsr i still run them i've got every rifle out there and i still go back to the vsr i just like them and the fact they've come out with this new short folding stock m lock beast is great like it is really really light i think it might be lighter than the maple leaf chassis stock even but it's solid so I like it, it gets a thumbs up from me. Um, I'm gonna do some more content on it when I get some upgrade parts. Obviously I've got wasps and stuff, um, but I need to, to get some Spring Custom Works triggers to put in there to see if it will take it and sanity check that obviously other cylinders of things are gonna fit. But a few little changes that they've done, like with the hop unit, the tolerances seem spot on. The new little hop adjuster, that's solid, no more wiggle. It's, it just fits, it clicks, it's nice. Obviously you've got the TM trades on it. I like it, I do like it. I didn't think I would, I was a bit like, oh, it's just another TM, it's just in another stock. And it is, but it's a nice stock. It is, I like it. I, I don't, I like the Maple Leaf stock as well, but I feel, I feel the Maple Leaf stock is better quality because it's one piece, whereas this is two together. But this is very, very slim, like you get your whole hand around it. And they're clearly going to do other little accessories for fake mags and stock tubes. So at £245, £250 I think. It's not a bad rifle. I think it's going to be good. I'm very tempted to run it tomorrow? Maybe? Just shove a ghillie wrap on it. Whack some fours maybe? I mean it's probably going to be really slow. But it's going to be quiet. 
It'd be different to use it, whack a red dot on there, run around with it. Maybe I will. I'll have, a, I'll have a think. If you see me with a really sad face tomorrow, it's because I did and I've damaged it or broke it or it didn't work very well. And if you see me with a very excited face, it means I've used it and I'm having fun. So closing thoughts really. If you want something a bit different that you don't mind putting some work into, you are going to get the TM quality, like the externals are great, the tolerances between all the parts is good. If you've got a bit of creativity of working out how to HPA it and where you're going to run the lines, then yeah, definitely. If you do just want something out of the box to run and you want a VSR and you don't want to upgrade, then SSG10 is still a good contender. If you want a cheap VSR that you are going to upgrade, something like a Cyma still, but if you want something for the looks that you don't mind putting a bit of time and energy into, then uh, yeah, this, I like it. It is good. And hopefully you guys have liked this video. It's the first one I've done for a long time. So I'm still trying to work out the format and the lighting and everything. So if you've got any feedback, you know, be gentle. Be, be gentle, but do criticize. I'm happy to have some feedback. Because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying the content again. It's good to be in a, a better spot where I'm able to sit down and record stuff do the Instagram design and things again because it's been a, it's been a sh shit couple of years for everyone obviously so let me know what you think any more questions about this drop it in the comments or message me on Instagram I'm pretty uh, pretty responsive on there and if you've got one of these and you're doing anything cool with it tag me let me know let me share it people are going to have questions I want to see what the community is going to be able to do with this but on that note thank you very much guys like subscribe ring the bell and all that crap always appreciated and uh, yeah, enjoy your week.